Make sure to check out the private Discord server. It's a Patreon link below in the description. Okay, we got to talk about property prices, housing prices, and also our juicy Redfin report. Now, I'm sure all of you real estate investors out there want one thing. You want to have cheaper houses so you can, at the very least, buy a home. Right now, it's a very, very competitive market with a lot of homes being sold like crazy. But that's only in very specific places like Florida, you know, Georgia, the Midwest, and even places like Manhattan. We're actually seeing a few bidding wars here and there for certain properties. But generally speaking, we're seeing a massive decline in housing prices. The rental market is absolutely nuts right now. There is a Redfin rental market tracker, and they're asking rents and also the bids for these rents are going down. Landlords are facing rising vacancies, not only in the residential sector, but especially, guys, in the commercial sector. Now, the reason why nationwide homes are going down is because some of the most expensive cities in the U.S., basically all of California and also Seattle, a little bit of Texas as well, prices are going down. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard a lot of news articles about home prices going up. Yes, that's true, but that's very, very little in the nation. There's specific cities where there's a massive inflow of California people, and a lot of these smaller suburban cities with less than like 300,000 people usually have home prices that are slowly rising up this year. But for some of the biggest cities like San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, some of the tech and culture hubs of the U.S., we're seeing a massive decline, and it's not good at all. And this is a big trend that's happening. We're seeing the rental market finally going down. And the rents actually peaked back in around quarter two and quarter one of 2022. Now prices are kind of down to like pre-pandemic levels or during pandemic levels. And as you can see here, you know, asking price for a lot of these rents are slowly going down. The number of vacancies are also rising to an extremely high level. And this is very scary because when you see a lot of rental growth slow down, this generally means increased foreclosures. A lot of people in a lot of these cities, like, you know, basically all of California, you know, the state with the most amount of people obviously will command the most amount of rental units. And a lot of these rental units and some of these cities who have shown 10 or more percent decline in price, landlords are facing a lot of pain. But landlords are fine with prices go down as long as it could pay off the mortgage using the renters every every month money. A lot of these homes, landlords aren't stupid. They calculate this number and they also look at the rental yield. And usually the landowners every single month don't really pay the mortgage with their own money. They use the renters money. But now with rents going down and combine that with the housing prices going down, you're not only seeing massive vacancies, but a lot of foreclosures as well. It's really, really painful in the market, guys. Now, we also have seen SL Green seeing a lot of these rents dropping. It is a big, significant change, guys. Now, we want to see the commercial real estate market because commercial real estate is also very important. It's a one to two trillion dollar industry in the US, and commercial real estate has already fallen. If you look at commercial real estate prices, even in very, very hot residential cities, you're already seeing commercial real estate properties going down. My city isn't really big. It's around 300,000 people, and we have a brand new constructed office tower. It's great. It's fully glassed out. It's pure luxury in downtown. But when I actually go in and look, literally 80% of the interior isn't even renovated because they can't even find a tenant. Yeah, sure, they find a few tenants here and there, but like I said before, 80% of the floors are literally unrenovated, unused, and it's been about three to four years. So this situation has really exacerbated after the pandemic. So if you check out what's going on here, a lot of these office towers are going down in price, and San Francisco is going down the most. If you guys have looked at San Francisco's 350 California Street, it was sold for $300 million back in 2019, and now recently it was sold for 75% off. What a deal. I mean, I can't even find 75% off on Amazon but they found this in the commercial real estate space. So $300 million back a few years ago, now being sold for 70 to 85 million bucks. And the buyer is definitely very, very happy. And I'm sure people also say that it's a very dumb decision as well. 75 to $80 million, probably down the drain due to the fact that 
pretty much no tech worker wants to come back to San Francisco. And even the bosses are like, yeah, San Francisco isn't the way it should be. And with increasing homelessness and a lot of these big cities having higher crime, we're seeing a lot of upper class Americans moving out to more suburban friendly areas and areas that just have less people and just a better vibe overall. We're also seeing a huge inflow of new construction suburban communities with more walkable neighborhoods. And this is kind of what people want. Not everybody wants like the LA or New York City or Chicago lifestyle more. It seems like recently we have a rise of digital nomads, online working. People are just pretty much everywhere nowadays. They don't actually have to stay in one specific spot to do their tech or finance work. And even some of like the less paying jobs, like $35,000, $40,000 a year, are also online. So why in the world would you ever live in LA when you could go somewhere cheaper and way better? Like you could have a view of the ocean like this, but for probably $500 a month if you go to like Thailand or Indonesia's Bali. Like I said before, commercial real estate is going to be banking's next big worry, especially with a lot of these small and a few of the mid-sized banks having massive commercial real estate property loans. A lot of the bigger banks, they don't have as much, so they kind of want to focus on other stuff. But commercial real estate has always been a little bit risky, but the riskiest after the pandemic. And usually big banks don't like to do commercial real estate loans, so small banks are usually very eager to do so because they get less customers. So they get anything they want. Okay, they're basically like Wall Street's guy where they'll take any job. And now small banks are probably collapsing even more. And don't underestimate Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger's warning about the commercial real estate market. It will collapse spectacularly, and the moment is we don't really know when. Now, here's the thing. Reevaluations for a lot of these commercial real estate properties are now ongoing with several commercial real estate properties suddenly noticing, oh, we were worth like half a billion dollars like a few years ago. Now we're only worth like half that. And this is exactly what's happening, guys. You know, a lot of these vacancies also equivalent to a crazy high amount of zombie office buildings. And like I said before, just my little example in my own city, that newly constructed office tower, yeah, 80% of the floors, they didn't even bother to renovate because they kind of know that nobody wants it. And also like the crazy condos up there, nobody wants that either. So it's basically like a building that just nobody wants and the banks don't even want it either. And a lot of these homes are facing these zombie office buildings. And then combined with like another one to 1.2 million homes that have permits and under construction, we are about to see the rental markets being flooded with vacancies and also new units from the residential and commercial real estate sector. Now, what does this mean? It means that home prices will probably be going down even more. Now, here's the thing about this real estate crisis. Yes, we are in a crash territory because we're seeing commercial office skyscrapers being sold for 75% off. That is literally a definition of a mega crash. But also keep in mind that not every city in the world or every city in the U.S. is going down in this direction. Some cities are doing better than others. So the best way to invest is pick cities that you think will recover and have a massive inflow of people back. And also pick properties that have major price cuts and try to offer as many bids as possible under the asking price for a lot of these homes if you want to secure a cheaper house. And for the people who want to sell... It's going to be a pretty difficult market. And just be very, very careful, guys. This market is here to stay with high interest rates for the next year or two. It's about to be a wild, wild ride. And before guys leave, like I said before, please check out the private Discord server. It's a Patreon link below for some amazing trades. We trade live every single day. Trade with us, guys, and make some money with us. It's a great community. It's a great server. It's 10 bucks. Click the Patreon link below. Join it. Connect Patreon with Discord, and you're in. See you guys later.